What is going on, Charles Botenston? We are gonna be talking about a subject that many people go into the purchase of a condo, not knowing, because you don't really need it, but you kind of need it for a bank, but debt to income ratio, it is vital going into co-ops. Co-ops right now, even if it's on 170th Street and it's three units, they feel like they're Fifth Avenue in the most special co-op. Every single one, they wanna feel special. They have these rigid rules. Meanwhile, you're saying, yeah, but this is a very good candidate. You know, we're putting someone through the, the co-op process right now and, and I say, we have plenty of money. They make plenty of money and they're just asking for notaries and more bank statements and where's the gift coming from? What bank account? So Show those bank accounts and we're just sending more and more and more and more and more documents. And I'm like, these are amazing shareholders. So this is the thing is you gotta handle everything going into an offer. You gotta handle everything going into the purchase of your apartment and there's three things they look for and we're gonna have videos about all of them. Number one is debt to income ratio, post-closing liquidity, and credit. We're gonna be talking about debt to income ratio. So essentially, in short, the little line item that you say, oh, okay, I understand a little bit about what Charles is talking about. Obviously, when you work out the numbers, it's a little bit different. So the amount of debt that you have, debt is student debt, other loans, it could be, and by other debt, it's pretty much all debt. And I have a, a list of debt that you could be thinking about. Debt to banks, relatives, investment payables, automobiles, mortgages, unpaid real estate taxes, income taxes, uh, loans to life insurance, outstanding credit card loans, things like that. You have all these things that you're paying every single month, and I'm not talking about revolving debt, so your current rent that you're gonna drop. But if you have a mortgage, and you're gonna hold that home while you buy another home, that is debt. So you have to look at it. So when you buy the new home, you're automatically gonna have monthlies to the building, and if you have a mortgage, mortgage. So you put those two together. On top of that, you add other things, student loan, and then the other debts that you may have. The other debts, alimony, child support, things that you're like, oh no, no, it's not that big of a deal, it's a thousand dollars. It's like, yeah, no, that has to be included. And the reason being is that when they run your credit and they don't see that debt come up on your financial statement to the co-op, the co-op's gonna say, this came up on your credit report, yet it's not in the purchase application. And they'll say, what else are they hiding? We don't wanna do that. We wanna be as transparent as possible. When you're transparent and you go into the purchase application correctly, the listing agent loves you, the board loves you, the attorneys love you, the managing agent loves you, and then guess what? You get to buy the home. But if you go in and you're trying to say, well, is this being bought for my kid? I'm hiding this debt, this alimony, and this, this areas that you kinda of just don't wanna talk about, which is maybe IRS payments things like that. So you have two types of debt. You have revolving debt that you pay down every single month, which is say you have a credit card and it goes up to $5,000 or $1,500 or whatever the case is, and you pay the whole thing down in full, then that's that's revolving debt, you know, con ed. That's not debt, that's revolving debt. When you actually have a staple item, so a principal payment that you have to pay every single month, then in other words, it's pretty much a set amount. So if you have say 30 grand in IRS taxes, you have say $600, you have to pay every single month. If you have student loans, your, your amount of monthly payment is probably gonna be the same. So you pay $1,500 every single month. That has to be included. That is all the debt. And it's all broken down. It's on the Rebney financial statement. Rebney's financial statement is Real Estate Board of New York. So we have that. Now let's talk about debt to income. So income is pre-taxes. Very important. If you make a certain amount of money, say you make 20 grand a month and then there's taxes taken out and obviously there's other things taken out. IRA, 401k, if you have 529, which is student savings. If $8,000 is taken out, you don't, you include the 20 grand, you don't go to the 18. So in other words, they pay you 12 grand a month, but in other words, you, you take away 12 grand, but the way that debt to income ratio works is it's the gross income that you make. And this could be gross income on other things. I have dividends and interest income, real estate income, bonuses, commission, overtime wages, base salary, other assets. If you have pretty much anything that you're, you're obtaining, annuities, whatever the case is, I, I have a, a slew of things. And then you obviously have just a staple assets that you have, but it's only sources of income that you get every single month. If you have something that is not vesting, but you know in the future it's gonna vest, you can't include that, it's anything right now. And then we'll talk about post-closing liquidity, which is another topic, but we're talking about debt to income ratio. So you take all of the debt and you take the gross income that you make every single month 
and then you divide it into each other and it comes out with a number. The bank wants you to be at 42%. That's high. So in other words, say you make $100 every single month, they're willing to give you a loan so long as only $42 leaves your account every single month. That's nowhere near co-op, okay? Most co-ops want it under 30%. They want it at 29%. Then there's a lot of co-ops that want it at 25% or lower. And to be honest, when, when you start tipping that 25 to 29 scale, then they say, put money in escrow. How much money do you have left over? What's your credit score? How, how, how long have you been at your job? How serious of a candidate are you? What's your financial position right now? Do you have, what's your 401k? What are your other assets? Do you own other homes? Can you get rid of any of those homes? Can you get rid of the automobiles or any other monthly payments? They get really religious when it comes down to 29%, 25%, 27%. Me, as a listing agent, I look at that, I do this. The reason being is that you will get denied from the, the board if it's at 31, 32%, and they have a complete cutoff at 28 or 27%. This is extremely important. So you take all of the debt that you have, you take all of the income, you divide it into each other, and then it comes out with a number. The bank is easy. Getting a loan is easy. Getting through the co-op is challenging. So again, when you start going over this, go to the Google, Rebney, R-E-B-N-Y, R-E-B-N-Y, financial statement. It's linked to, if you're actually watching this, it's linked in the, the blog post. We have the Rebney financial statement. It's easy to look at on, we have, we add everything up. So if you wanna go over there, we have calculators as well. There's schedule of stocks and bonds and everything else. And it comes out with a value that you need to get rid of. And it, here's, a, here's the best example. So when I had student loans, you know, they were making plenty of money. So it wasn't a big deal about the student loans, but the problem was is that they were so close. I said, what if we get, there's only a couple of ways to actually lower your uh, debt to income ratio. Number one is make more money, which is kind of hard immediately, unless you're say, it, it is kind of hard because it's what you're getting paid right now is kind of a lagging factor. In other words, you've done the business, you're, 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 W-2 already reflects that, your pay stub already reflects that. So it's really not about making more money, it's about reducing your monthly payments. And it's obviously, you have installment debt, like I talked about before, which is a boat, a house, IRS loans, or bank loans, or any other kind of loans. You know, it could be even loans that you have, bank loans, it could be for your company. It doesn't really matter. So what we did was, we were at 31%, and I said, listen, we have a lot of money in the bank, can we take some of that money, pay down your student loans, your monthlies will come down, and then we'll be at 28%. Boom, sure enough, that's what we did. They ended up buying the property, they loved it, they are happy. But if we kept it at, at 31%, that money probably would have went into escrow. That money probably would have been with the co-op for two years, not gaining interest, not doing anything on behalf of the shareholder that was buying. It's Listen, it's a complicated subject. You have to be just, you, you gotta sit down and you gotta be as transparent as possible about not transparent as possible, be as transparent about anything when it comes to the financials. Because if you say, oh, by the way, I actually have a car that I haven't paid off, but I have monthlies of $1,200, or I have this home in, in Florida, or I have this, this uh, timeshare in, in Bermuda, or I have a boat I forgot to add in from uh, Florida, that's all gonna come up, especially if you financed it. If it was cash, that's different. But if you financed it, it's gonna come up in your credit report. The, the co-op is gonna see that, the managing agent is gonna see that, the listing agent is gonna see that, the bank is gonna see it, the bank's gonna obviously have it on your application, on your, your commitment letter and things like that. So it's all gonna show up as assets or liability. If you guys have any questions, obviously leave in the comments below. This is one of three areas I already talked about. So this is debt to income ratio, 29% is some, most co-ops, you wanna be below 25, that's ideal, okay? It sounds crazy, it's insane, but that's what they require, that's what kept us from the recession in 2009, 2008, that hit the rest of the world. And then the other, which we're gonna be talking about is your post-closing liquidity. How much money after you close does the co-op wanna see? So click by, see that video, that is, those are the two things, and obviously credit, that the co-op is really gonna see, the bank is gonna see, and they're gonna base your entire, your application on that. So, any questions on this, leave us a comment below. Have an amazing day, and as always, you guys lead the way in questions or anything you want me to talk about. Talk to you soon, enjoy your day.